Sheriff? Nope. But I think I got a flyer on her. Unless I'm wrong, she's a petty thief named Nellie Handley. should convict me. Yeah. Mm. Are you sure you're all right, Victoria? I'm fine. Thought I'd aim too close. Hit you. Here. Use this. That printer's ink stains. Thank you. Do you think we convinced the people in the street? No worry there. They'll all be witnesses. What's wrong, Dan? Victoria, I can't let you go through with it. But everything's arranged. My family thinks I'm visiting relatives in Sacramento. That's where you should be. Not on your way to the state prison. If your family didn't know about this, they'd be down here like a shot. They'd never let you go. That's just why they're not going to know. Nobody's going to know, just the two of us. You realize what a place like that's going to be? Especially for a woman like you. Used to a big house, beautiful things. I know it's not going to be any picnic. I know it's a pest hole. The men's section is a pest hole. The women's compound is... Well, I've heard that Chinatown slave girls live better. You'll be sharing a space with the prostitutes, murderers, even lunatics, Victoria. But, Dan, to get those things changed, the prison reform board is going to need a first-hand report. But you can't. Dan, please don't try to stop me. I've been thinking about this ever since the day Maud Elliott got out of that prison. I know Maud means a lot to your family, Victoria. But you don't owe her your life. And it could come to that in the state prison. Believe me. A few years ago, Dan, Audra and I were on our way to Benicia. Suddenly, we both came down with diphtheria. They quarantined us right there in the stagecoach, and nobody, nobody would come near us, except a young girl by the name of Maud Elliott. She brought food and medicine, and she nursed us both until we were completely well. So you see, I do owe her my life. <laughs>
Nellie's my name. Nellie Handley. Yes, Nellie Handley. I was just, uh, just going over your papers here. Attempted robbery. Is that correct? Speak when you're spoken to. Aye. You will address me as Warden Garrick. Now, according to the report here, you've only been in America two weeks. Is that right? Me home is in Dublin. Warden. Dublin. And were you a thief there, too? Thief indeed. It was in the service I was in a fine house. Lord Brawley himself, personal maid to his lady, I was. Liar. Says here you were a pickpocket in the Dublin flea market. Two convictions. Well, no, I've... Uh, I, I've had me share of bad luck, I'll admit to that. Bad luck, eh, Nelly? I'd say more like bad blood. You know, Nellie, when I was practicing law, I used to see hundreds of people like you. Different faces, different crimes, but all born rotten. Let's just get one thing clear. You can't fool me, and I warn you, I deal severely, severely, with anybody that tries. So, if we, uh, we have any Irish rebellion here, you will wish you were dead. Now, come on. Keep moving now. This is the woman's yard. Men's compounds at the other side. Don't let that bother you. Only men you'll see here is us guards. Move. What's the matter, Hanley? Don't our clientele appeal to you? Huh? <laughs> We got some famous people in here. Take Big Mary, for instance. Her and her two sons was road agents. Held up over a hundred coaches before they got caught. Why be she chained? She isn't incorrigible. She's been that way since the two boys was hung. That's a prisoner that can't be handled. Go on. <laughs> Get away from her. She's 60 and she's burning with a fever. That ain't all right. Look out! Take! Pull her off. But Hanley, you might as well learn some discipline right now. Scrub! Thank you. 
a new roommate for you, Kay. Keep you from getting lonesome. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, this is an ugly sound. And if you don't listen. My name is Nellie Handley. Up the rebels, eh? Aye. Kate Wilson, Frisco. Oh. Thought the Irish was used to wash tubs. Talk travels quick here. What you in for? The Evans Rory. Here? Unless like the warden sees fit to make it less. Garrett gets paid for the prison. It'll be more, not less. Be that legal? Maybe not outside, but Garrick's the only law here. We already added at least a month today. Today? Button in over mealy like that. Girl would faint. Ah, oh, yes. Did the doctor see it to her? Doctor won't be here for two weeks. Comes just once a month. But tis dead you could be. Yeah. It's one way of getting out. Poor love. Now, is there nothing we could do for her? Do? Ain't you made enough trouble? You already got cloot down on you. Down on me? For trying to help a poor sick lass? Listen. In here, nobody helps nobody, living or dying. I don't want no link with you, understand? Just stay to your own side of the coop. I got enough troubles. They got meat in them. It's the first time this week. Garrick wants to see you, Kate. I ain't finished eating. Now, what kind of attitude is that for a gal with a fine gentleman hankering after her? Ah, gentleman. Well, what else would you call a man who practiced at the bar? Only bar he ever practiced in was a saloon. Did he ever tell you the story about his being a lawyer? The closest he got to it was selling them legal books. Well, how about that high society gal he met last time he was in Frisco, huh? She believes him. That Francine something or other? I've seen her mincing around today. With a parasol. I think it was hot out. Well, that's cause she's a lady, Kate. Ladies always carry parasols. Look who's talking about ladies. You know, her family is real big in politics. Now, if Garrick was to marry her, more than likely they'd pull some strings and get him in the legislature like he's always saying he wants. And then? Then I might get to be warden, Case. <laughs> Takes a fox to be warden. Pig's too dumb. You want to keep that feathered mattress and them clean clothes, you start prettying up. I'm giving you five minutes. Kate. The warden. Do you care for him? Care for him? I hate him. Then why do you not refuse to see him? You seen Mealy, ain't you? When she come here, she was pretty as paint. Now she's sick all over, maybe dying. And ain't you be the same? I told you I didn't want no link. I'm in here for five years. The only way to live through it is to not make trouble about anything. It 
Be sorry I am for you, Kate. Thanks. I'd as soon have powder and perfume as wash tubs. Glued them ready. How'd you like your first night at state prison handling? You sleep good? <laughs> That's right, you keep working. With Mealy gone, you got a lot to do. Gone? How do you mean? Ain't you hurt? Mealy died last night. Oh. Did you not tell the warden she was ailing? We're running a prison, not a hospital. Does a human being mean nothing to you? Prisoners ain't human beings, Hadley. They're scum. Like this here wash. I'll break you for that, Handley. I'll break you. enough to make no trouble. office, Kate? Wait a minute. I'll carry you. You really walk. <coughs> She's been coughing like that ever since last night. 
to me like she's got a fever. Yep, sure does. You really are a pig, Clute. A real pig. So are you. <laughs> Beans will warm you better in that watered down coffee. One of us will get no sleep. I tell you, Maud, <laughs> Maud is innocent. <laughs> You're going to stay with us until you're completely well and strong. You're not to think of going back to the millinery store until you are. Well, Marty! Hey, it's good to see you. Welcome home. Hey, you lost some weight, haven't you? Oh, I wouldn't worry about that. A few days will have some nice thick steaks for you. Fix you up in no time. <laughs> it's all right, Marty. It's all right. Now, there's nothing to be afraid of. Come on, you come with me. Come on. Right over here and sit down. Just relax. Nothing to be afraid of. That's the girl. Jared, what is it? Don't worry, Mother. It's nothing. Sheriff Bannock warned me this might happen. She's still in a state of shock. Shock? That prison she was in is a hellhole. Now, listen to me, Maude. There's nothing to be afraid of. You've got a full pardon. You're free. Jared. Maude. Now, listen. You have been proven innocent of that killing. You never have to go back to that prison again, not ever. Do you understand? Audrey, will you take her upstairs? What the devil they do to her in that place. Treated her like less than an animal. Jared, this can't go on. It simply can't go on. We have to talk to the prison reform board. It... We can't. We can't go on. The prison. We have to 
talk anymore. <coughs> oh, boy. Clute! Hey, Clute! <coughs> What's going on? I gotta see Derek right away. It's important. to somebody. A lady, maybe. Well, if she's not Irish, then her name probably isn't Nellie Hanley. If her name isn't Nellie Hanley, what is it? No trouble getting that answer out of a ward. We just beat it out of her. Uh -huh. None of that. She has enough proof as it is. You really think she's a reform board investigator? A woman? Why not? They've tried every other way to prove we've been mistreating these prisoners. Those fools, they had their way, they'd make this prison a vacation land. Yeah. What are we going to do? Well, who brought her in here anyway? Sheriff Bannock. I'll just take a ride over to Bowstring. Have a talk with him. Warden. About that porcelain bathtub. What? So I won't have to wash in the trough no more with the others. You said I could have it next time I got some important information. Sure, Kate, sure it's yours. Come on, Kate. Come on. Get me out of bed just to talk about a sick prisoner? Well, I thought you might be interested, Sheriff. Her name is... Nellie Handley. Nellie? Yeah, I guess the rigors of prison life didn't agree with her. She developed a fever, became delirious, and made some very interesting revelations. Get to the point, will you, Kerrick? Well, in the first place, she isn't Irish. Second place, her name isn't Nellie Handley. Her immigration papers are all in order. I got a copy right here. Well, that won't be necessary, Sheriff. I just happened to bring uh, my copy along. It says here that she's from Dublin. And she supposedly arrived in San Francisco a week before her arrest, supposedly, on a brig called the Gull. What do you mean, supposedly? Well, I stopped off the newspaper office before I came over here, Sheriff. Thought I'd look over the files. You've been waking up a lot of people tonight, haven't you, Garrick? You must be trying to cover something. I'd say it was the other way around, wouldn't you, Sheriff? In any case, uh, the Gull's casualty lists were quite explicit. Here's a copy of it. Nellie Hanley died of smallpox before the ship docked in San Francisco. Now, look, Garrick, I don't know what you're up to, but whoever that woman is, I saw her rob a pawn shop, and I've got eyewitnesses to prove it. I'm not questioning your arrest, Sheriff. I think you managed that very cleverly. What I am interested in is who is Nellie Hanley, and what is her connection with Maud Elliott? All right. She's Victoria Barclay. Her son, Jared, is Maud Elliott's lawyer. Barclay, Barclay. Stockton Barclays? She's on the prison reform board. How bad is she? Sick enough to have a distorted view of prison conditions, I'm afraid. I doubt it. I want her released right away. I'll go on back to the prison with you. Sure, Sheriff, sure. You know, you've always had it in for me. Why? We're in the same business. We deal with scum. You have to keep them in line. Sure, I keep them in line. But I don't live off them. Drain out their insides to fill up my pockets. Prison is a place for punishment, Sheriff. A lot of people feel different. Like the prison reform board? Those meddlers. Sheriff, what I don't understand is your interest in this. 
Or maybe it's you that's filling your pockets. What? Maybe the reform board is paying you. The reform board doesn't even know about this. Nobody does. Are you trying to tell me that only you and Victoria Barkley are in on this? That's right. She wanted to make sure there wasn't a leak like there was before. And her family doesn't know anything about it? She didn't want to worry them none. Well, I'll be done. Sheriff, you have renewed my faith in human nature. Let's go. Let's get it done with. Yes, Sheriff. Let's get it done with. <laughs> You sure Bannock is the only one that knew about Handley? I'm sure. And there's no chance you only wounded him. I told you he's dead. Take that coat over to Kate and have her clean it. By the way, how is Handley? Is she better or worse? Well, Kate says her fever's going down. Oh, that's unfortunate. Afraid we're going to have to arrange a little accident for her. Preferably at the hands of one of the prisoners. <laughs> well, I don't know. Them Barclays is mighty important people. If something should go wrong and they found out. You know, Clute, with luck, in six months, I'll be in the state legislature. I think I could uh, guarantee you the appointment as warden here. This time tomorrow, Nellie Handley will be dead again. Get some supper. I'll take over here a while. Thanks, Clute. Turkey, Mary. Go on, I had plenty. Go on, it's delicious. <laughs> Ain't that good, huh? You know, I think they've been a little too hard on you, Mary. Keeping you out here alone at night when everybody's inside. Stick to the ground like you were some kind of animal. A little kindness goes a lot farther. But we do you a good turn, you do us one. Ain't that how it works, huh? I think so. I think, for example, if I promised you them chains would come off for you, and you'd be out of this here prison in six months, it might do me a favor. I want you to do something for me, Mary. Nothing you ain't done before. I want you to kill somebody. One of your prison mates. You say no, you'll rot here another 10 years. Stake just like you are now. You'll never see the other side of that fence, except in your coffin. I'm making you the best deal you'll ever get. You think about it. Who is she? I'll send her out in a minute. Get these chains off. wants to see you. What for? You just get dressed, Miss Nellie Handley. How'd you get loose? 
They ain't gonna like it. They find out you busted free. What is it, Mary? I ain't done you no harm. I'm doing somebody a favor. You ought to know about favors. Open up! Open up, please, somebody! to do it. Well, now, I, I... I couldn't leave a body to be murdered. I'd have left you. Nellie, I've got something to tell you. Hmm. When you hear it, you're gonna wish you hadn't helped me today. Oh, Kate, you owe me nothing. I've never been much on, on paying back before. Mostly, I took. You know why I'm in here? Hmm. I worked for a crimp on the Barbary Coast. A crimp? That's a saloon where they Shanghai sailors. And before that, I was a shill for a traveling gambler. And before that, I... I started everything early. Okay. What is it you're trying to tell me? The other night, during your fever, you did a lot of talking. And I found out you ain't Irish. You got something to do with the prison reform board. I don't know what, but that's why you're in here, not because of no crime. Well, during the same cell, you, you couldn't help hearing. Don't you understand? Do you know why I have perfume and fancy pillows? Oh. I ratted on you. Clute and the warden know all about you. So that's why Big Mary was loosed. Oh, I didn't think that was an accident. Of course it wasn't. No more than Sheriff Bannock's getting shot last night. Shot? Are you sure? Warden got the news this morning. Just after he got back. You shouldn't have told them. The sheriff was trying to help you, all of you. We were all trying to help. Well, I ain't worth it, Nellie. Well, maybe not. But I need you to help me get out of here. Will you do it? Do you trust me, even after I... Yes. Yes, I do. Yeah, Nellie. I'll help you. Good. Now... My name is Victoria Barclay. Ready, Kate? Hey. What are you doing in bed? I told you it's supper that Garrett be wanting to see you. What's the matter with you? Like lilacs before. 
Hey, let's go. Inside. Well, you know that the uh, warden gives me the run of this place, and I've been meaning for so long to get better acquainted with you. But I'm on duty. Well, then you'll just work a little harder tomorrow. Just nicked her. Oh, oh, get down, get down. You wait here. Where are you going? Well, there must be a farmhouse or something where I can... Maybe I'll find a wagon and some horses. Well, they'll spot you. No, no, I'll be careful. But if they do, I'll, I'll tell them we got separated. I don't know which way you went. <laughs> You didn't really think you'd get away, did you, Hanley? No sign of case. You ready to tell me which directions you went? I told you I don't know. When we get you back to prison, you will. I'm glad you're home. I was so lonesome. I was beginning to talk to myself. Oh, that's the first sign, you know. Everyone deserted me. Did the mother go with Nick and Heath for the cattle auction? No, she went up to Sacramento to visit Aunt Ruth. Well, why don't you go with her? Too much tea and cake. Mr. Barkley. Yes, what is it? Uh, yep, mother. In the prison. Hurry. Hurry. Audrey, get a doctor. <clears throat> But Kate Wilson is a notorious liar, as her record of convictions will show. She escaped four nights ago, alone. We've been looking for her ever since. Well, you can stop looking for her. She's under the protective custody of the Reform Board, pending investigation of this prison. Here's the court order. Well, very formidable, Mr. Barkley. My congratulations. This preposterous story. Now you get this clear. Kate traveled miles with a bullet in her leg and gave herself up to tell me this preposterous story. Now, are you going to take me to the women's section or not? So, Mr. Barkley, do you see your mother amongst these women? I'd like to see the cells. You are authorized to see the prisoners, nothing more. That means all the prisoners. I told you, you have. You're lying, of course. 
Now, either you let me see those cells, or my next authorization comes from the governor himself. Fine. But until then, these cells will remain off limits to the public. All right, Mr. Garrett. But I'll be back. You can count on that. You prisoners get back to work! Well, Kloop, I'm afraid Nellie Hanley will have to disappear tonight. out to the middle of the lake before you dump her. I don't want her washing the shore. Yes, sir. Just for being here. She wish I didn't have to leave. Oh, OK, you'll be going back to the same prison, but it won't be the same way. The prison reform board has appointed a new warden and replaced all the guards. Ain't like being free, though. Don't you worry, Kate. You'll be free. You just remember that parole system I told you about that's being set up right now. Yours is going to be one of the first hearings. You think all them important men are going to listen to me? Well, the reform board listened to you, didn't they? Yes, you're right. Guess I don't have too much to worry about. You know I've got away with men. I always have had. <laughs> oh, Kate.
a woman. She just nicked. Do you know her, Sheriff? Nope. But I think I got a flyer on her. Unless I'm wrong, she's a petty thief named Nellie Handley. This should convict me. Yeah. Mm. Are you sure you're all right, Victoria? I'm fine. Thought I'd aim too close. Hit you. Here. Use this. That printer's ink stains. Thank you. Do you think we convinced the people in the street? No worry there. They'll all be witnesses. What's wrong, Dan? Victoria, I can't let you go through with it. But everything's arranged. My family thinks I'm visiting relatives in Sacramento. That's where you should be. Not on your way to the state prison. If your family didn't know about this, they'd be down here like a shot. They'd never let you go. That's just why they're not going to know. Nobody's going to know, just the two of us. You realize what a place like that's going to be? Especially for a woman like you. Used to a big house, beautiful things. I know it's not going to be any picnic. I know it's a pest hole. The men's section is a pest hole. The women's compound is... Well, I've heard that Chinatown slave girls live better. You'll be sharing a space with the prostitutes, murderers, even lunatics, Victoria. But, Dan, to get those things changed, the prison reform board is going to need a first-hand report. But you... Dan, please don't try to stop me. I've been thinking about this ever since the day Maud Elliott got out of that prison. I know Maud means a lot to your family, Victoria. But you don't owe her your life. And it could come to that in the state prison. Believe me. A few... Oh. 
woman. She just nicked. Do you know her, Sheriff? Nope. But I think I got a flyer on her. Unless I'm wrong, she's a petty thief named Nellie Handley. This should convict me. Yeah. Are you sure you're all right, Victoria? I'm fine. Thought I'd aim too close. Hit you. Here. Use this. That printer's ink stains. Thank you. Do you think we convinced the people in the street? No worry there. They'll all be witnesses. What's wrong, Dan? Victoria, I can't let you go through with it. But everything's arranged. My family thinks I'm visiting relatives in Sacramento. That's where you should be. Not on your way to the state prison. If your family didn't know about this, they'd be down here like a shot. They'd never let you go. That's just why they're not going to know. Nobody's going to know, just the two of us. You realize what a place like that's going to be? Especially for a woman like you. Used to a big house, beautiful things. I know it's not going to be any picnic. I know it's a pest hole. The men's section is a pest hole. The women's compound is... Well, I've heard that Chinatown slave girls live better. You'll be sharing a space with prostitutes, murderers, even lunatics, Victoria. But, Dan, to get those things changed, the prison reform board is going to need a first-hand report. But you can't. Dan, please don't try to stop me. I've been thinking about this ever since the day Maud Elliott got out of that prison. I know Maud means a lot to your family, Victoria. But you don't owe her your life. And it could come to that in the state prison. Believe me. A few years ago, Dan, Audra and I were on our way to Benicia. Suddenly, we both came down with diphtheria. They quarantined us right there in the stagecoach, and nobody, nobody would come near us, except a young girl by the name of Maud Elliott. She brought food and medicine, and she nursed us both until we were completely well. So you see, I do owe her my life. 